It is easier to find men who will volunteer to die on a battlefield than to find those who are willing to endure a little bit of pain with patience. Julius Caesar The twelfth chapter of Proverbs, the twenty-fourth verse, states that the hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Julius Caesar didn't know it at the time, but he was getting a revelation from God about something. He was a ruler, but those underneath him would not do his bidding basically because they were lazy. You see this image in the lower right, some may take issue with, saying that it's vanity. But any man who's ever been to the gym, ever set a goal, ever tried to work out, knows that this is just an image of pain. That everything that you're seeing here would require putting away the carnal flesh and driving on towards the goal. To look like that, you're going to be hungry a lot. You're going to be in pain and sore a lot, not only while you're working out, but when you're not. That's what this is evidence of. Now, real quick, if you hear some noise in the background, I've got some work going on fixing a tiny leak in the roof, so don't be distracted by that. But I would like to just say a big thank you to everyone who's joined us over at Patreon. We've got five videos up in the last two weeks, taking the gloves off, so to speak, and telling the truth about some things. It's a lot different than it is here. I have to kind of couch what I say. But over there, it's completely gloves off. It's only one dollar, one US dollar per month. Less than that if you sign up for an entire year. At one time it comes out to ten and some change. Believe me, it's worth the investment. Once again, thank you to everyone over at Vimeo for giving us the opportunity to use those servers to keep things away from the prying eyes of Google. What Julius Caesar was talking about at that time was siege warfare. You see, we see these images of the ancient world and we, of course, have seen Hollywood try to represent what siege warfare was like, but it was largely quiet. Meaning, you took an army and you set it in camp around a walled city and you cut off all trade. And you starved everyone out. Well, you see, that took time. And that was largely boring. And if the people on the inside had made provision, many sieges failed. Why? You see, these soldiers, they got antsy. They wanted to fight. And sitting in camp all day, they had to find ways of occupying themselves. And at the time, sanitation wasn't the greatest so imagine even if you had an army of, say, 10,000 men, how much food you would need just to have them sit there at the siege, and then getting rid of all of the uh, sanitary things that come from eating. And I'll just let you use your imagination. How much of that would you be producing every single day, and where would it go? These siege camps became huge, festering pits of disease, and they would, of course, bring in entertainment, female entertainment for the guys, and they'd have that. Diseases ran rampant, and many sieges lost more men to that than they did to the actual war. Plus, they had cattle and animals walking around. It was just a disaster waiting to happen. And men deserted, and men were like, this isn't what I signed up for, this is terrible, this is horrible, I would rather... Die. I would rather go out and fight and die than to endure pain with patience. Now, that's what he was talking about. But we see this in the modern world, especially when it comes to healthcare. Now, I'd like to share a clip with you today from the Patriot Nurse. I've talked about her quite a bit. But she channeled a little bit of Julius Caesar in her premiere yesterday. It's called Supreme Court Mandate, Nursing Chaos, and What You Can Do. It's at the 724 mark, and it runs for about two minutes 
And what she says here actually confirms something not only that Julius Caesar said many years ago, but something that I alleged many months ago that people kind of laughed at me for. So without any further delay, let's take a listen to what the Patriot nurse had to say. We have had in the United States over the past 70 years and greater, a progressive sickening of our population. People are living longer, thank God, but they're living sicker longer. And because of this, it didn't matter what type of pandemic, what type of disease, it did not matter. This is a canary, a canary, a canary in the coal mine event that really just brings into focus our poor choices en masse, the progressive sickening and weakening of people. We have historically, through our heavy interventionalism and reactionalism after the fact, medically, we have propped up this idea that people can live making chronically poor health choices in a consequencelessness environment. That is not the case. And unfortunately, it's taken a situation like this for many people to look around and say to themselves, gee whiz, if I am morbidly obese, that puts me at a greater risk for a whole lot of different things, not the least of which is feeling bad about myself, feeling dejected, not having any ability to accomplish my activities of daily living. It puts me at a greater risk of mortality from the unknown. So, regardless of what type of disease it is that's circulating around, we have mortality rates and morbidity rates in the United States that are horrible in some cases. But when you look at the patient populations, it is little wonder because we've let people get away with this idea that you can live for decades abusing your body, and there will be no consequences, and even if there are, we can wave our magic wand and undo it all, and that is not true. Bingo. Our choices. Our choices. We are the ones to blame, because we have this fictitious, make-believe fantasy notion that medicine can wave a magic wand and make it all go away. And the specific example she uses is morbid obesity, which is largely a choice for most people. Now, this is the issue with Caesar. You see, he noticed that there were men out there that in siege camp wouldn't train. They'd sit on their ass and do nothing. Pardon my French. They came there to fight. They came there to get the thrill of fighting, get their money and leave. Enduring pain with little patients, they wouldn't train. They wouldn't train. Now, where did people get this ridiculous notion that medicine can swoop in and fix your choices with a magic wand? Just like the Patriot Nurse said, it's real easy. It's been indoctrinated since the 90s, in the late 80s, early 90s. This began to be a theme pushed in science fiction. And make no mistake, Star Trek plays a huge role in this. I know a lot of people are shaking their head and laughing. But when you get right down to it, if you watch, and I did for a time, I haven't in a long time, Every single episode across all iterations, and by the way, Star Trek, just series, there's six of them, and forget the countless movies. What was the theme? Oh, it doesn't matter. We can just pull out a hypo spray and inject you with whatever to fix whatever whenever. Captain, the planet has 15% gravity and the atmosphere is totally poisonous. Yeah, don't worry. Psh, here you go. You're fine. And that was the theme. Through the movies, through the series, 
and believe it. You see, the 1980s, or is the 90s? The 1980s was the health fitness era. It was the era of aerobics and being in shape and exercising and being out and doing things. The 90s was the grunge era, the era of sit at home and let technology take care of you. Now, here's where I might hurt a few feelings. But this is going to be the truth, and anybody who's ever served knows it. How many of you enjoyed getting up for PT formation? How many of you, if it were optional, went anyway? It wasn't optional for a reason. Because they knew nobody would show up. Pardon me, they knew nobody would show up if it was optional. Many soldiers don't carry these habits past their time in the military. Why? Because it was negatively reinforced. Everybody hated PT formation. Nobody wanted to go do it. That's why they had to make it mandatory. Oh, but tell you what, range day? Range day. Oh, nobody missed that. Everybody loved that because that was fun. That was fun. You want to see evidence of it? Real simple. Look at what happens when guys get out of the military. Oh, they still go buy all their ballistic weapons and they still go to the range and they'll pop tin cans off hay bales all day long. Ask them to show up for a militia PT formation. In fact, I defy you to find any videos of any quote-unquote militia types talking about their uh, physical training program or their PT formations. It's because they don't have them. Because they remember how much they hated it. And it wasn't fun. Because what was it? What was it? It was enduring pain with patience. And they can't have it. And this is a problem. And the Patriot nurse just nailed it. People making poor choices expecting medicine to come in and wave their magic wand and this is where they get the idea this is where they got the idea and just to put a cherry on this Sunday if you think there's some virtue in laziness just know who you're standing with Bill Gates. I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. How often does that fly in the military? Where you decide, oh, I'm just going to go do it my way, not the military way. Because it's easier. How often does that fly? And while we're on the subject, about a year ago, I started sharing this Twitch channel that I had found. Uh, this Swedish soldier that was live streaming basically her entire life. And she was an acrobat and a weightlifter and a competitive bodybuilder and all sorts of other things, a fitness instructor. And it was really incredible because she showed the diet. She showed the sacrifice. And I got a lot of hate for it because be like, oh, those images, though, those images. Let me ask you a question. Everybody loves to uh, pull out the club modesty out of the Bible and pull one tiny scripture out and use it uh, to shame others. Let me ask you a question, modesty folks. What's your definition of it? You see this picture over here on the right? You see, most of you would see the woman dressed on the right and think, oh, yeah, she's dressed modestly. Well, not to a woman from the late 1800s she wasn't. This is the 1920s. This was horribly inappropriate. You could see almost her entire calf. So does the Bible say that modesty is just the standard of the day? Whatever the, whatever the standard of the day is, that's what you should do. Is that what you think the Bible really means? See, modesty is a state of the heart. Modesty is not a state of dress. It's a state of the heart. And every time they talk about immodesty or some issue to, do, to deal with lust, it's the man's fault. 
The Bible says if a man looks upon a woman and with lust, he commits, not her, he commits adultery. It's his fault. And I don't remember reading anything about the issue with David and Bathsheba where she was to take any of the blame for what happened. Bathing on the rooftop, so to speak, like the song Hallelujah talks about. It was his fault. So just understand, modesty is appropriate to the venue, appropriate to what you're doing. There's actually specific prohibition, more specific prohibition against fine clothes, makeup, and jewelry than there is about the relative amount of clothes. So just saying, and sloth is one of the seven deadly sins. So if you're 150 pounds overweight and you're clothed head to toe in silk and satin and you've painted up your face and you're wearing big bobbly earrings and you got your hair all done up nice, you're just as much in violation as any girl at any beach wearing whatever so you can join us at twitch by the way twitch.tv forward slash florida monkey this is her channel where she sits and talks about working out and eating right and the life of somebody who goes through this type of thing and some of the stuff she does is pretty incredible she's as strong as most guys and she's 120 pounds so i just wanted to cover all this today and kind of clear the air on some things, but thank you once again to everyone who's joined us over Patreon. I very, very much appreciate it. Vimeo, it's a wonderful platform. Thank you very much. It's not free for me. I have to pay to put up videos at Vimeo. I have to hold an account there. That's why we're able to say what we're able to say. That's why we're able to be truthful gloves off, because literally I pay for that server space. YouTube's free. That's why they can restrict it. YouTube's free. That's why they can restrict it. So if you want the real truth, and any platform, by the way, that allows you to upload for free, they're going to take your rights. They're going to take your free speech rights. If it's free for you to upload to those servers, I guarantee you, whether it's Rumble or what, whatever else, BitChute or this garbage... They're going to eventually take your rights. You see, this is the key. This is the key. It's about putting your money where your mouth is. And letting your actions speak more than your words. Julius Caesar knew this. Anybody who's ever been to the gym knows this. And the Patriot Nurse knows this. Because she's been a nurse and she's seen it. So I'll leave it there. God bless, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.